All right, we got a live look at Galveston. Look at that, the pyramids in Galveston. It looks like it's kind of overcast and we're getting rain all day long, probably. We certainly will. Yeah. So, you know, part of living in our great city of Houston is that allergy season can be brutal. Did you say great for living is I mean, allergies? No one warned Why? me about this before I moved here. Sorry. The sneezing, the sinus pressure, me. the difficulty breathing. Me. Yeah, me too. We all deal with know. it. And now with flu season in full swing, that can make things even worse. So what do you do and how do you handle all of this, especially when it comes to your symptoms? Joining us now with more of those answers is Dr. Robert Palmer with American Sinus Institute. Hi, Dr. Palmer. Thank you so much for joining us because Appreciate especially it, yeah. as a sinus sufferer myself, I really have questions for you. Now tell me, first of all, a lot of people are dealing with their sinuses and probably not even tackling them right now because of Harvey and all of that. But what should people be doing now to prepare themselves for this season that is going to be a long one for a lot of people? Well. Most people are having an extra whammy because of what happened. And the allergen count is high, there's bacteria counts that are higher, and there's the, the mold. But in any event, this time is going to be tough because they're trying to take care of their priorities at home. Yeah. But they probably should use uh, some salt water solutions and some over-the-counter medication for allergies, which will help them out. So the salt water solution sort of flushes oh, out some of those contaminants? Exactly. It's particular. It's not an allergen per se like you know, molds and uh, your trees and pollen, these are actually particulates, you know, from sawdust, from sheetrock. Yeah. It's into your sinuses, it becomes an irritant, it can cause recurring infections. So this is like a one-two punch, by the way, yeah. for the people who have been tearing stuff out of their homes, oh, exactly. uh, dealing with all of the dust and everything. I, I, one thing that we've talked about before is when people are experiencing these symptoms, a tricky, tricky part is figuring out the cause of those symptoms. All the time. So okay. can you explain how you guys are able to, to diagnose and treat the problem? Well, exactly. I mean, the symptoms are the same with, with allergies and an infection. The infection may be more intense. It's essentially the sinuses get blocked. They can get blocked from allergies, they can get blocked from particulate matter, and they can get blocked from an upper respiratory tract infection, which is viral. And that can lead to facial pressure, that leads to runny the pain, nose, headaches. the drainage, and essentially will eventually become a sinus infection. And people who have that recurring greater than three or four times a year fall into the category that they need to have a procedure that will reestablish ventilation. And that's what we do at the Sinus Institute. I know one thing I've always been taught is, okay, this is probably going to be gross, but yes. to look at, look at you, Hello. to look at when you sneeze, of course, your mucus and the color of the mucus to determine, you know, if it's just an allergy, if it's just regular sinus or something more than that. Does that still help and hold true? Yeah, it does. I mean, you can have particulate matter that can cause the mucus to change, but most of the time it's a discoloration with the facial pain that suggests that you have a sinus infection and you will need antibiotics. Mm -hmm. If you just have allergies and the mucus is clear but you still have pain, you don't need antibiotics for that. You need some type of topical spray, antihistamines, decongestants to help you breathe and help you ventilate. So what happens though if you are on medication but the medication isn't working anymore? What should you do next? You need to come and see the American Sinus Institute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means that you're not ventilating and you're not draining. Okay, you have to drain. The sinuses are active. They're always producing mucus. If they get blocked and retain fluid, the fluid is nothing more than protein and sugar. And guess what likes protein and sugar besides us? Oh, uh, bacteria. 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 So if yeah. it stays in there and the nasal passages are blocked, that bacteria gets into the sinus and you end up with a sinusitis. Oh, interesting. Yes. I didn't re that makes total sense. So listen, you mentioned the procedure uh, opening up these passageways. Can you describe to us exactly how it's done? It's yeah. a balloon sinoplasty? It's Yes, exactly. And the reason it's such a wonderful procedure, we're not damaging the sinuses. In the past, we would go in and remove tissue. That's not good. Sinuses do not like to have their tissue removed. What they want to have is an opening that will ventilate so the fluid can get out. Can drain out. And, and that's what we're seeing right now. Exactly. Yes, right here. And if you go in and scar the mucosa, then it can't move because it works on a mucociliary flow. It's like a moving carpet. Mm -hmm. And if that mucus that's in the sinus that's been blocked and retained gets that opening that you scarred, where does it go? It falls back into the sinus. Now you're into recurring infection. Right. So with the balloon plasty, we don't do any damage to the sinuses. We just re-establish ventilation. How long does this procedure take? 15 to 20 minutes, and no sometimes way. 45. And do you have to go back and is it a reoccurring surgery you have to have or what happens? We hope not. Okay. I've done some people over again. You know, nothing's perfect, but Compared to endoscopic sinus surgery, we get about an 80 to 90 percent success rate. Whereas when we were doing endoscopic sinus surgery, and I did 
3,000 of them in my career, I was happy if I got a 50% success rate. Wow. We were doing too much. Less is better. But also, Very important. American Sinus Institute, you guys do the most procedures, I understand, in Texas? Yes, the most between, in office procedures? between the three offices, exactly. And for, for most of your patients, are they immediately getting relief? I mean, can they, how long until they can go back to work or until they're feeling like oh, they can breathe again? If they don't have a job that requires heavy lifting, they can go back the next day. Oh, really? They're getting relief within the first 72 hours. I see them at two weeks. And when they come in at two weeks, most patients are very happy. Already they don't have the headaches, they don't have the blockage, they can breathe, and uh, they feel 100% better. Oh, that's fantastic. Anytime you can breathe is a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> yes, all right. Almost out of time, by the way, about 30 seconds left. Yes. Any advice you have for all of us as we are moving into the lovely flu, flu season? season. Let me, let me explain to you. <laughs> we don't operate because you have an upper respiratory tract infection. Right. That's just the cause. You're going to have to go through that like anybody else. If you get a virus, it's going to go away. You need to treat yourself with decongestants and get through that period. If, however, after the flu resolves and you're still having facial pain, then you come and see us for that. That's, okay. that's the idea. That's the advice. other thing I wanted mm -hmm. to explain that's very important. We talk about allergies, we talk about upper respiratory tract infections, we talk about sinusitis. The most important thing is that if you just have allergies and you think you may not benefit from this, allergies can cause recurrent sinus infections, okay? It's, a, it's an inflammatory reaction to an allergen. It's not an infection of itself. But if it blocks your sinuses, then you're susceptible for the recurring infections. So people who normally never would have had endoscopic sinus surgery can benefit from the balloon plastic. All right, Dr. Palmer, thank you so much. We really right. do appreciate your time. And also for more information on this procedure and ways to improve your own sinus health, contact American Sinus Institute at 713-BALLOON, which is 713-225-5666. Or make sure you check out their website, americansinus.com. And still ahead, Heather Chrisman is back with a look at what's trending, including how a pair of loafers